Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kevin here bringing you a video on information technology. Hope you're having a good day. Happy Thursday. So today I want to go over Windows 10 for anyone that's brand new to IT. So basically, I'm going to show you from A to Z what you should be focusing on Windows 10. Obviously, there's more than this, but this is what you should know if you're brand new to IT and if you're trying to focus on IT. So let me share my screen with you and show you what I'm talking about. So I have the operating system right over here. Right now I'm installing Windows 10 Pro. Um, and as I'm installing this, I'm going to go over like what you should know, and what you shouldn't know. So let me go back. So this is actually is if you want to install it, if you try to install Windows on a brand new opera, like you're upgrading it. So you have a, an existing operating system, which we're not. We have a custom one. So we're going to install it directly to Windows. Um, why am I going over this is because if you're new to IT, you need to understand how Windows 10 works. I know some people will be like, oh, you go read the A plus. You can read the A plus. A plus is good to know. But when you go to a job interview, you need to understand how certain things work. And you have to understand the differences in certain, in certain operating systems. So you need to know the difference between Windows 10, like a fresh install, or Windows 10 on a local account in Windows 10 right over here on a, on, on a uh, domain account. So understand the difference between local account and domain account. So a local account is a computer you get out of the box. It's not added to the domain yet. Basically it has local users accounts on them and it's not managed by anything. A domain account or domain, a computer that's added to the domain, not domain account, a computer that's added to the domain is a computer that is managed by your administrator or IT, IT, IT systems administrator or network admin, whoever's managing your, basically someone that someone in IT is managing that computer that's added on a domain. That's the difference. So one is manage, one is not manage. So just keep that in mind because you're going to be asked about that in a job interview. Uh, also understand that when a computer is on a domain, the, the commands you run for like domain stuff should work. So for example, like if I go here and I do CMD, right? And if I do if I do net user help desk, right? Slash domain, this should work. And it's gonna tell me when the password expires, when's the last set, stuff like that. If you do another one, who am I, for example, that should work. This is who am I help desk. If you do who am I FQDN, FQDN, fully qualified domain name, it's gonna tell me that I'm part of a domain controller called KevTech. How do you verify even more? Like, how is this in the domain controller? Obviously you go to the C drive down here, you right click on this PC, and you hit properties. When you do that, it tells you that it's under KevTech domain. So you need to understand also like how to, how to add a computer to a domain. And you have to understand that, that this won't work unless it has to be on the same subnet. Unless you, in the VM environment, it has to be the same subnet. It has to be able to talk to you. So you have all this back end stuff going on as a network admin the network admin, whoever's in charge of this, they set it up that they're able to communicate with each other. So that's the reason why we go over like um, IP addressing, whether it's uh, class A, class B, class C. If you know about IP addressing, then you know that, you know, it's basically talking to each other. If they're not in the same subnet, then you cannot ping it. You cannot add it to a domain, you just can't do anything. So for this one, I, already, I have my domain controller open or my server open on my other screen. You can't see it, but it's actually right over here. So if you're able, if you ping kevtech.com, it should work. So understand that anyone can have the name kevtech.com, right? But the IP address is what you care about. So I'm going to remove this from this one. You want to understand about the IP address because that's where it's pointing to, if that makes sense. Um, also, you want to keep in mind the certain commands that you do that you usually use for for uh, for domain controllers is not gonna work on a regular computer that's not fully joined the domain. You'll get a bunch of error messages. So like I did I did net user, right? I had the net user and you get the, then there's GP, GP result, right? Like GP result slash R. And this is to see the results of your computer, what part of security groups you're part of. Then there is um, NS lookup, which is, that's, that's normal. You could do NS lookup. And then you have to understand, um, do control C to get out of this. Then you do ping and you could do ping. You could ping anything pretty much. You do a continuous ping on captech.com, the domain controller minus C, and which could do a continuous ping of the domain controller. So 
understand how these commands work. Obviously, you know, there are different types of commands you could type in. And to stop this is control C to get out of that screen. So you have to understand how these commands work. Then there's net use. Net use doesn't have anything. It's just, this is for share drives. Then there's net user. Net user is all the accounts on the computer. So these are all the, all the accounts on the computer, whether there's WDAG, utility account, uh, guests, et cetera, et cetera. So obviously some of these commands will not work if you have a Windows 10 operating system that is not added on the domain. So understand that some of these commands only work if the computer is fully joined on the domain. So that's the reason why people ask me like, oh, why is this, not, why is this command not working? So this, this command for password, password exp expiration is only, it only works if it's on a domain controller if this computer is fully joined. Um, computer like the one on the left, obviously like this one, I'm gonna go into it right now. It, there's certain limitations. You cannot do domain, domain or CMD commands on this. It's just not gonna work because you need to understand that this computer is not joining the domain. And also you need to understand that this is a local account versus a domain account. So a computer that's joined on the domain, you're able to, you know, do net user slash slash domain. Any domain, any domain related um, commands are going to work because it's joining the domain. Obviously, if you have a group policy or if you have a a computer that is managed by your admin, CMD might be blocked. You don't know. CMD might not work. It might say it requires elevation. It might say a bunch of different things. So it really depends what company you're working for. But you need to understand how this works. So hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to call this one uh, admin. Uh, it says, please enter your Microsoft account as an offline account. I'm doing limited experience. Uh, I'm going to call it admin. No password on it. Yeah, and that's it. And that's pretty much it. So you need to understand the differences because a local account is not the same as a computer does on the domain. Remember, the domain is managed by your admin. It's managed by your administrator. So you need to understand the differences between both of them. You'll get asking the job into you, like, what's the difference between a local account and a computer on a domain? These are not the same thing. One is managed by your administrator or managed by that domain controller, whether it's kevtech.com, google.com. Any of these domain controllers are managed by your company or your organization. A regular computer, a regular computer on Windows 10 is not managed by your organization. It's just a regular computer out of the box, Windows 10 installed on it and, and it has local accounts on it. It's not managed by anything. It's just managed by whoever has that computer and lo their local accounts on it. You could, you, know, you could put restrictions on it and stuff like that. So that's it, that's pretty much it. And I'm gonna show you what happens when I try to run some of these commands on a computer that is not managed by a domain. You get a bunch of error messages. The reason why you get a bunch of error messages is because this computer is not joined on the domain. So you, you need to understand that that's the reason why some commands that I, I do in my videos, they work and then some don't work because the computer has to be fully managed by your domain name server or your server, wherever server is connecting to. Obviously, if, if, you, if, if your computer is not able to be added to a domain, it's because you know, it has to be your IP addressing, it could be some settings in the VM, it could be a lot of different things. So you have to understand all these things, how these things work. But for someone that's brand new to IT, all you care about is IP config, um, IP release, IP renew, flush DNS, ping, P-I-N-G, um, ping the domain controller. Like I, I, if you go on a job interview, you're like, oh, I can't get into a computer. What do you do? Oh, if I can't get into this domain controller, I, I would try to ping it. And if I, if I can't ping it, then I wanna see if I can, if I know what the IP address is and get it from my, network admin or sysadmin, and I try to ping the IP address instead of the host name or the name of the domain. So this one, all you care about is CMD. Like I said, ping google.com. That's all you care about. Then you care about IP config, IP release. You're releasing the IP address, IP renew, IP, IP config, IP config, flush DNS. To DNS. If I do IP, if I do I, if I do uh, net user uh, admin slash domains, I mean, what, what are you trying to do here? Look, system error has occurred. 
the domain does not exist. It's not in a fully joined, it's not in a domain. It's not gonna work because it's not in a domain. So don't, cannot, you cannot do commands for domain if it's not added to a domain. And if I do, um, who am I? It's my favorite command actually. It tells you the, des the name of the desktop. Who am I? FQDN, fully qualified domain name. It's gonna give me an error message. Unable to find this or unable because it's, it's not added on a domain. So just keep that in mind. So obviously this is part of help desk and then help desk you need to understand um, like why, why you wouldn't share a folder on a local C drive on a Windows 10 computer. And that's because of sharing. If you go to advanced sharing, you can only share this with 20 people. On a server, you can share with more than 20 people. So you have to understand how that works and why it's done in a server, not on a local computer, if that makes sense. Also understand the differences between how to navigate the operating system. So how to get into manage, if you go into manage and how to go into your local accounts, how to get into event viewer, task scheduler, device manager, you might be uninstalling, reinstalling a driver, whether it's a sound card, whether it's an audio device, whether it's a display driver setting or something else. You need to understand how these things work. Also part of doing IT, you need to understand how the services work. So you have your services. So you may be going into Windows search, for example, resetting that service. So then the search works because this is search for everything that includes Outlook, that includes Outlook, that includes email, that includes searching on a folder, everything. So you, you may have to reset this for someone that cannot search on Outlook. You don't know. That's just an example. So these are little things you need to know. Obviously, you need to understand how control panel works as well. And a few other things and, you know, how to add a printer for someone. You can add it. You can add a printer and the printer is not listed. You just go to here. You can add it by IP address. You can navigate into the printer by browsing to it. If you go over here, you could go into um, add a local printer. So it really depends how you set it up. Obviously, everywhere is different. You know, some companies have it through IP address. Some companies have it added, added like locally with USB, which is like a USB port. You plug it in. It really depends where you work, obviously. So make my, my, uh, there we go. Yeah, so it really depends where you work. You put the IP address and you can put it right over here and detect it up to you, up to your environment, how you have it set up. Also understand that some companies have um, settings that are being blocked. So like if you have voice settings, um, you have microphone settings, microphone privacy settings. So you don't understand that some of these applications might be blocked because your microphone is not allowing you. There are permissions for everything. That's for camera too. You know, you have camera permissions as well. Some of these settings may not work because your camera is not allowing it. So things like that. So you might encounter like, oh, my Skype's not working and it's probably not enabled in, my, in camera and microphone. Oh, my 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 uh, Slack's not working. Camera's not enabled for that. Oh, my, my, my uh, Cisco Jabra's not working. Microphones I enabled for that. So those are the little things like that, navigating the sound settings, knowing how to ping, knowing I do IP config, knowing how to do IP config, release, renew, flush DNS, difference between a local account and a domain account. And that's it. That's pretty much it. I don't want to make this too long, but those are like the little things you need to understand when you go for a job interview. It's not just navigating a, 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 a start menu. It's more than that. You need to understand how to get to certain things. You need to understand the differences, differences between a local account and a domain account. Why? It doesn't work here and why it works here and why I cannot access a certain website. It's because you need, you need to know what ping is. You need to understand if you have internet, you need to understand if the IP is set up correctly. You need to understand if all your settings are properly set up to access that website, to access that different thing, to, to do certain things on that computer. You may be restricted to it. You don't know. So every company has their own method of setting things up. With that being said, I hope you guys have a great day and I hope this helps you out. All right. Take care. Peace. Later.